So this week I'm going to be attempting to repair this PlayStation 4 Slim. It's in lovely condition. I got it for the bargain price of £45, which was really good. It was collection only. And basically it sounds like it's got a faulty power supply. So let me just read what it says here. So it says, the PS4 was brought from Game Shop last year in April 2018. We still have the receipt, but it's out of warranty. No power to the PS4. I did open it up as I'm a, maybe an electrician or electrical engineer, and I found the internal fuse blown. Changed the fuse, but must be shorting on Earth somewhere. This is console sale only and collection, please. Still have the box to go with it. So I collected it. It was a lovely guy, and uh, I got the box and everything. It's in really, really good condition. Immediately, I'm thinking a faulty power supply. So basically, when I bought it he said that the area does suffer from power cuts and he thinks it might be related to that might not be could be purely coincidence but uh, now he's got himself another PlayStation 4 and he's bought himself a surge protector as well so hopefully it won't happen to him again so he basically said the internal fuse has blown again and also he said the fuse here has blown as well in the plug so let's get this thing apart and see what is exactly wrong with it right let's get this thing stripped apart Oh, it looks very clean. You can tell it doesn't really look older. I think it's completely believable that it was bought in 2018, April 2018. Well, so I'm just gonna be fast forwarding through this now until I have the power supply out and then we can check that fuse. I'm just going to go across these capacitors here just to see if there's anything left in them. I don't think there is. Right, okay, so this is the power supply here. And that's the model number there. ADP160ER. So I definitely know that you can get them for sale on eBay. Well, first of all, let's have a look at this fuse. So this is the fuse here. Yeah, and you can see a li tiny little bit of a, you know, not a mess, but you know, a tiny bit of residue here. So obviously this has been replaced. You can see that these two solder lumps look different than all the others. So let's just test the fuse. So I've got it set to continuity. Right, okay, so the fuse is definitely uh, definitely blown. So for it to blow, it must mean that these two wires have touched together. So basically the live and the neutral, you can see the brown and the blue. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go across and see if I can find anything. So for example, what I could do is I could short out the fuse by using like tweezers or something like that. Obviously I'm not plugging it in to the, uh, you know, there's not 240 volts going in here, it's only my multimeter. So I could do that. Yeah, and then I can start going through the board. So for example, if I go onto the blue one here, I can start kind of, you know, going around the place and seeing see where it goes and also go on to the brown one and see where it goes yeah uh, either that or the fuse looks like it's between the brown and here because if you look at the back here you can see that there's just a little track going between here and here so basically the live wire the brown wire goes to here yeah through the board onto this little track here and then goes between here and here where it joins up the rest of the board. So what I can do is I can go between here now so I don't have to keep shorting out the fuse and then go to the various different places around the board and see where, where it's going to. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be working on right now.
In fact, there you go, you can see the short. So if I go between the blue wire here and the fuse this side, it's shorting out. So that's not right. Blue wire here and there it's shorting. So if we were to short this fuse out, we should then have a short going right the way across. Let me just make sure that is. Yeah, so we should have a short going across the two wires, which we have. And that's the reason it's not working. Now, there might be something wrong with the motherboard as well, but there's definitely something wrong with this power supply here. So that's not right. Actually, I'm just going to check the plug, because apparently he said that the fuse in the plug was blown as well. Right, got continuity there. Continuity there, so this fuse hasn't gone. No, that fuse is fine, so it is just the internal fuse in here. But there's no point in me replacing that fuse because we've still got a short between this side of the fuse and the blue wire. So it's not the fuse, the fuse is blown because something's causing it to blow. Right, okay, I've already found something that doesn't look right. So if you have a look here, I'm on the, let's call it the good side of the fuse here. So on the live wire, the brown wire, and look, the shield in here is shorting. So it doesn't make a difference whether I go across the brown wire or the blue wire, they both end up here. Well, the brown wire is not connected through the fuse because the fuse is blown, but when the fuse is okay, it doesn't make a difference. Look, that short's there, and the blue wire short's there. I think I'm going to unsolder this here, and then see if the uh, see if the pads themselves are shorting, and then if the pads are shorting, we know it's nothing to do with this. If the pads all look fine, then it might well be this component that's failed. Oh, that's interesting. Look, I've just taken it off, and can you see there's a little scorch mark? Right, that's definitely a good sign, isn't it? Right, okay, so the scorch mark corresponds to this side here. So let's see if that is the side which is uh, shorter now. I don't know if these are supposed to short or not, but let's get the multimeter. Right, so this is the side that's shorting, so let's see if the middle one is short into here. Yes, it is. And this side isn't. So maybe this is the thing that's gone faulty, or maybe something has caused this to go faulty. But look at that. That definitely shouldn't be there. That's a nice burn mark. Right, now let's see if our uh, short has gone between the live and the neutral. So we go between here and here. Yes, it has. Look at that, it's gone. Right, I wonder, is that it or is there more to it? Wouldn't it be amazing if that was it? Right, so that goes to there. Oh, sorry, my, oh, my multimeter was off. <laughs> right, now let's see. That goes to there. Yes, before that was shorting, now it's not shorting. Look at that. Right, so, let's flip the board over. And let's go between here, so this is basically the live, and see where it should come up.
Oh, sorry, it's going to have to be here. Here, right, okay. Right, so the middle one is live. That must mean the neutral, which is this one here, is going to be there. And also the grounds as well. So it's grounds, yeah, look. But this one here is not doing anything. So now which one, let me just get my bearings right. Which one was shortened? So it's this side here is shorted, these two here. So according to this here, these two are shorting. So that's saying that the live is shorting with the neutral. And they're not anymore. I wonder if there's any other faults on here, or is that the only fault? Also, I have to see if I can find out exactly what this is. So it looks like some sort of fancy transistor. Let's zoom right the way in. Okay, so this is it, 24N60M2. I'm gonna type that into Google and see what it is. GKOT8. I'm just gonna write those things down. Well, I was just looking closely there and look what you can see, a massive crack. Look at that, going right the way through here. And I presume this is kind of on the 240 volt side. I mean, I don't know that, but look at that crack. And that is the one that's shorting, that side there. So I got really lucky by trying to find that, you know, by finding that so quick, purely because this shield here was, uh, was essentially live. Right, okay, so I've written down the details, and as far as the fuse is concerned, the fuse is easy to get, because if you have a look, they very nicely have written down what it is. A T4A H-250 volts. Well, I'm gonna Google these and see exactly what this thing is here. Okay, good news, I've ordered up some of these, and also some fuses as well. So this is basically a MOSFET, and I got them from RS Components. Now, annoyingly, I can't collect them in branch because they're not available, but they are available for next day. So I've ordered them up with free delivery, and uh, they should be here in a couple of days' time. So this one here was £2.50, and this one here works out to be about 20p. But I've got some of them because I'm not sure if this is definitely going to fix it. I might change this, change this, and then I might realise that it's something else before it that's causing it to short. But I don't think so. The burn marks here, it kind of makes sense if there was a bit of a surge on the line. Maybe... Maybe this went, which then caused this to go. I don't I don't actually know. I mean, maybe there is something else wrong, but 100% there's burn marks here, which is not good. 100% this is cracked, which is not good. It's whether it was this that failed that caused the fuse to blow, or whether something else has gone, which has caused it. I mean, looking at using my meter now, it all seems to be okay. The short basically has gone between uh, live and neutral. But, you know, I'm not really confident. I'm not really confident with this stuff. So I'm really glad I found this, but until I put this in, I won't really know. Now, when I solder in the new ones, if it blows again straight away, at least I have a couple of spare to work with. So that's where we are. So I'm going to come back to this now in a couple of days when this arise, it arrives, and then we'll put it all together. We'll see what happens, whether there might be more serious damage to the actual PlayStation 4, or I might actually be really lucky, and basically I might just have to replace this and this, and then it might work fine. So I'll see you in a couple of days' time. Okay, a couple of days have gone past and I've been waiting. Honestly, I've been so excited for getting these things to arrive because I've been desperate to pop them in here to see if that really is the fault. Can it really be that simple? It'd be so good if it is. So they've arrived from RS. These have not sponsored by video, in case you're wondering. And uh, I've got some of these T4A, I think they were, T4A fuses. 4, 8, yep, and uh, some of these MOSFETs as well. So first things, let's take out one of these and compare it to the old one. I presume that must be the model number. You can Google this anyway and then you can look at the data sheets online. I'm just going to have a very close look at this, see if the markings are the same as the one that I'm taking off. Yeah, they look identical. So, if you look at the top row of the, the markings, the, you can see that the top row is exactly the same. 24N6OM2. And if you look at the size and everything, it looks the same. So what I'm going to be doing is, 
I'm going to be bending the pins up exactly the same way that these ones are bent up and then I've got to take this off and pop the heat shield on here and I'm just going to use a dot a tiny bit of this little thermal compound because this is non-conductive so even if a bit did get on the pins it wouldn't be the end of the world but I'm hoping it's not going to I'm just going to put a tiny bit on see the old thermal paste is there Looks pretty similar. And I'm just going to clean off the old thermal paste off here. from the side here. So that is the thermal paste on here now and also cleaned up. So I'm just going to test it between the new one and the old one. So with the old one, do you remember it was shortened on the middle pin and this pin here because of the crack. Now with this one, let's see, is the middle pin? No, not shorting. There we go. All right, so that's good. So it's definitely testing different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder that into here and also pop the fuse in as well. And then hopefully I'm going to go across these here and I'm hoping this time they're not going to be shorting out. Right, I might as well clean up that burn mark actually. There we go. Right, now that I've bent everything into place, I'm hoping it's going to fit okay. Straight in, look at that, nice and easy. So we need to solder up this bit here, and this bit here, and then the three pins, and then I just need to cut the pins down to size. that's in happy with that so now let's sort out this fuse over here you can see how easy that melts because look at that because it is uh, leaded solder that was put on there well I presume it's leaded solder Okay, looking at this one, this one says T5A on it. You have a look up the top here. T5A, so it should be a T4A. Now, I hope when I do this that it doesn't actually, uh, you know, I, I kind of got my hopes up that this is going to fix it, but maybe there's damage to other components as well that I don't know about yet. Right, and now if you have a look up here, it says T4A. T4A. Just lining it up so I can get it nice. Nice and even if possible. and it's nice and flat against the board now not perfect not as good as I wanted it to be but it will be good enough now let's uh, get them IPA and give it a clean right okay so these are the ones here and this one and this one all looks pretty nice and these are the fuse ones over here. Okay, that one and that one. So now let's zoom out of it and let's get the multimeter and see if we still have a short when I go between these two here. No, we don't. Excellent. 
Right, so as I said, I don't know if it's going to work, but it's definitely testing differently than it did before. So what I'm going to do is, because there was so little to take apart, I am actually going to put it back fully back together, because I'm pretty hopeful that this is going to work. And uh, if it doesn't, I haven't got a huge amount to take apart anyway. Right, so that's all clipped back into place. So basically what I believe is, I believe that this is the one for the, I think this passes through the 5 volts, and I think this passes through the 12 volts. There's two little contacts in here, you see. Yep. And those little contacts go into this part of the motherboard. So I think this is like the higher voltage, the 12 volts, and then this is the thing that does the 5 volts for the USB and stuff like that. Give it a very quick clean while I've got it apart, but really this thing looks pretty much immaculate. It does come apart very nice. It seems like it's nice to work on. I know I didn't have to take much of it, much of it apart, but the little bit I did did seem nice. Okay, hi, I'm going to get my monitor up here because Unfortunately, my TV broke. You might have seen that video. So, uh, yeah, let me get my monitor up and let's turn this on and see if we're going to have a huge, massive bang or explosion or whether it's going to start working or not. Right, got my monitor. Monitor's turned on. Let's plug in the HDMI. I'm worried, if I'm honest with you. I'm very apprehensive. So that's the HDMI in. Let's plug in the PS4 power supply. What do you think, yes or no? Right now, I am thinking more yes than no. I think it's, I'm very hopeful it's gonna be okay. All right, here we go. That's that, I'm gonna keep it on the blue mat just in case it does go on fire. Here it goes, here it goes. Let's plug it in, here we go. Right, I've plugged it in, nothing's gone bang yet. Now, hold on now. Let's get this, so, uh, is this monitor on? I just want to make sure the monitor's on. Yeah, right, monitor's on. Here we go. Let's do the eject to begin with. No, but that could be because it's completely dead. Let's turn it on. Oh, no. Nothing there. Oh, I'm so gutted. I really thought that was going to work. I mean, I really, really thought that was going to work. Oh, how disappointing is that? Nothing there at all. Oh, what? Oh, I mean, I didn't hear any bang or anything. Uh, oh, I was certain that was going to work. Nothing there at all, is there? Do you know what? I thought that might have just been a nice, easy fix. I've never, I never really seem to be that, well, it's not luck, is it? It's because obviously I'm new to this. If somebody's doing these all day long, they probably would have checked other things before putting it back together and they'd have a better idea of whether it's working or not. Okay, but the good news is, I mean, it hasn't gone pop. So, let me just double check this plug. I mean, we know that fuse is okay, don't we? Well, what I'm going to do is just a simple bit of fault finding to begin with. I'm going to get the lead from my PlayStation 4 and plug it in, just in case there's something iffy with this lead. I mean, I've checked it for continuity, but, uh, you know, just in case something's been damaged. Very disappointing. Right, okay, never mind, such is life. Right, let me get the lead and see what's happening. Okay, I've got my lead plugged into it, and now uh, still nothing's happening. It's completely dead. But good news is, it didn't. I didn't hear a massive pop, but maybe now when I check the fuse, it might be blown again. So, uh, yeah, okay, well, at least 
I've got a little bit more info to go on now than I did before, so let's strip it down again and see if we can find anything second time round. Right, so I've got it taken apart again. Let's check the fuse, see if uh, see if it's blown. I didn't hear anything. No, so the fuse is not blown. Now, I'm going to be very wary of these capacitors here. So the fuse is not blown, so there's a good chance voltage has gone into this. Let's go to DC on my meter, and let's see if there's anything in these capacitors. Right, so where have we got? We've got negative and positive. Wow. 294 volts. Mmm. Okay. Now, ah, how am I going to discharge that? I know you can like put a screwdriver across them, but I don't mind if that was like 12 volts or 24 volts, but 200 and whatever that was, I'm not too keen on doing that. Let's have a look at this one. Yep, 293 volts. Right, I'm not going near that. Uh, so, how do I drain that? Unless I connect a light across it or something. But I haven't got any light on crocodile clips. Right, so, I mean, so voltage is getting into it, but it's not passing it on to the PlayStation 4. See, this is where, if I had a PlayStation 4 with the same power supply, I could then swap them over. Do you know what I mean? I have got a PlayStation 4, but it's an earlier model, model than this. I don't think it's got the same power supply, but I might check it out. I've never taken it apart before, which seems a shame to have to get rid of the security tab and stuff at the back. But you see, this might well be fixed now. It might be something that's blown in the actual PlayStation itself. But it does seem weird that this not, it's not even trying to turn on for a second or two, is it? Which makes me think it's still the, the power supply. Uh, let's go across those capacitors now and let's see if there are any. See if they've lost anything. Two hundred and ninety-two. There we go. Two hundred and ninety-one. So it is going away slowly, but I can't keep those on there for ages. That's actually going down quite quick now. I wonder, is it going down on the other one as well? Yes, it is. Oops. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave that for a while to discharge because I don't really want to go near that. I'm going to get my PlayStation Four. And, uh, yeah, see what power supply is. Just in case it's the same one, I don't think it is. I think there's numerous different types, but it's uh, it's worth testing it out, isn't it? Actually, thinking about it, the sensible thing to do would be to strip down the PlayStation 4 that I have, because if I take the motherboard out, it might become really obvious what the problem is, in which case then I won't have to take my one apart. If, for example, I look at it and I see there's a massive burnt chip on it, well, then I know that that's not normal. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically strip this down until I get the motherboard out. Looking at it further now, this has been taken apart here. Because if you have a look... I can see that basically this little lump of plastic here has been cut back. So I only know this because it's Steve from Tronics Fix. Basically, they haven't got screws everywhere. They've got these lumps of plastic that are just kind of like melted, kind of cost saving rather than using screws. So look, they're all gone from here. So 100% this has been taken apart further than just the power supply. Mm, I'm not, do you know what, My, uh, I'm not so hopeful now. I thought it was just a power supply that was taken apart. I'm not so hopeful now as I was a little while ago. long last I am into it there is a serious amount of screws so now what I'm gonna do is just have a good look around it I mean immediately I can see something here but this just looks like that's just dust isn't it so yeah I'm gonna get my little eye loop out and have a good look closely see if I can see anything
Well, until I take this clamp off, I can't see the other side, but looking at this side, it does look absolutely perfect. Really good condition. So I'm gonna put the power supply back together because I remember watching a YouTube video where they tested five volts on the end of this cable here. So I needed to take it apart to get to the end of this cable. And then when they shorted two pins out, they then had 12 volts on here. And then that will tell you whether the power supply is working or not. So that's what I'm going to work on now. And I completely forgot about the capacitors and that just gave me a real nice shock in my thumb. Wow, that was strong. <laughs> okay, let's uh, see now what they're testing. I completely forgot about that. Two hundred and sixty-two volts. They're still there. All right, let me take more care. So I've got it plugged into the, the power supply is plugged in now, so it's live. So I'm not going to put my fingers anywhere near that side of it. I'm just going to go on my meter here and I'm just going to test what's coming out of this little white connector here. Right, so I can use this as my, my ground. It's got nothing there. Nothing there, nothing there, and nothing there. Right, so that says to me that the uh, power supply is dead. I'm just going to test in here just to make sure there's nothing coming out here. No. No, zero volts everywhere. Uh, hmm. Well, it's annoying because on that power supply, there probably is just a very simple fault on it. It's just that I'm not going to know what it is. Look at that. You can see where the capacitor got me. Look at my thumb. You can see the two prongs off the uh, solder pads underneath got me there and there. Right. Uh, hmm. Do you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I might order up another power supply because I don't really know how to fault find it any further, if I'm honest with you. I'm going to see how much they are anyway. Well, OK, so I've had a look and basically, yes, I can buy them, but they're quite expensive. They're about £35 and there's only a couple of them for sale on eBay for this particular model, which is an ADP160ER. Annoyingly, there is other ones for £20, but Different ones take different versions of it. Even the PS4 Slim, it looks like there's different ones because this connector here on some of them is swapped around the other way. Apparently you can unsolder and solder in a new one, but if I'm going to buy a new one anyway, I might as well get the correct one. So £35 will hopefully get me one and that might solve the issue. But what I'm going to do is I want to fault find this one further because, for example, I've kind of come so far now, there's definitely power going into it and it's not... It's not uh, uh, blowing anymore so maybe it's just kind of one component that's faulty if I can pinpoint that then I don't need to buy myself another one now what I'm going to do is I was looking up how to discharge capacitors and a lot of people are saying to just put the screwdriver across them but then a lot of people are saying don't do that and look I mean what was it 280 volts I don't want to be shorting out 280 volts because that's going to create one hell of a bang uh, and I also can't see that being very good for the circuit board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a light bulb to here and I'm going to use some pliers and gently just tap these against the legs of the capacitor and then hopefully all that energy in there will be dissipated through here in the form of light for a second or a split second or one or two seconds. I don't know even if it's going to be enough to light it up. But uh, 
I need to definitely treat it with more respect. Even though that was unplugged for an hour, it was still holding voltage. And even after it shocked me, shocked me enough to burn my skin, it's still got 240 volts in there. So you need to be really, really careful. Remember, it was unplugged. It was not connected. The capacitors are storing the energy. So even I reckon after a day, there still might be energy left in there. So, you know, like note to self, when I'm dealing with power supplies, I need to take a lot more care. So if anything, even if I don't get this fixed, I've learnt a lot myself, you know, safety-wise in this video. And it doesn't matter how many times somebody tells you something, sometimes you need to experience it for yourself before you really sort of like sit up and listen to it. So uh, yeah, let's connect this up now and see if this is going to... Uh, see if this is going to work. Now, annoyingly, most of the bulbs I've got in my house now are, uh, or I should say lamps, not bulbs. Electricians will have a go at me for that. Most of the lamps I've got in my house now are like LED, so, uh, or like, you know, fluorescent ones. So I haven't really got many kind of incandescent. This is like a halogen. Why's that not going in? Oh, wrong way. Right, okay. So that's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these wires right back. So hopefully they're not going to shorten anything. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin them, I think. Tin them with solder. Take this apart again now. Hopefully it won't shock me. Right, OK, so there's those nasty capacitors. So they are... 450 volts, 68 microfarad. So now let's see what voltage is left in them. 250 volts. Wow, they're the caps that never die. So not only do they shock me, they've still got 250 volts left to shock me again. Right, okay, now I must stress, do not copy what you see in these videos. I know I keep saying that. But what I'm doing now, I really don't know if it's safe or not. I wouldn't do it if I really didn't believe it was safe. But I don't know, do I? I really don't actually know if it is or not. So there probably is much better ways of doing it. So please don't copy what you see. Right, so that's one pliers. I'm just going to get some more pliers. Right, OK. So one lot of pliers, another lot of pliers, making sure I keep my hands away from the metal side of it. So... Now, I hope this isn't going to go bang. I hope you will be able to see this as well. Let's put it here. Oh, there you go. Did you see it light up? Excellent. Took a little time before it lit up. Let's go on it now and see if that's enough to drain it. It just looks so weak, isn't it? But I can tell you the shock was massive. Well, hold on, <laughs> uh, enough to make me let go of it. Four volts, yes. And four volts again, let me go on that. Oh no, five volts, why is it going up? 5.7. Why on earth is it climbing? Oh, maybe it's uh, it's getting its maybe it's getting its charge from here. Let me just go across that now. I feel like I can do this safely now with my fingers. There we go. So that's going to have got rid of anything like that. And now I could go across with my insulated screwdriver, and it shouldn't make any spark now. There we go. Right. Okay. I'm just going to go across a few other things in the board just in case there's any sort of like remaining power anywhere. feel safe to work on that now. So I'm glad I've got that. You've seen it lit up for about a split second, so now it should be safe to uh, should be safe to work on. Excellent. Right, okay. Now I'm going to keep going through this and see if I can find anything. And if I do, I will, of course, let you know what I found. 
Right, I've just been sort of quickly going across it, and I have found a couple of diodes. Well, in fact, they're down as Xena diodes that don't really appear to be correct. But then again, what do I know? I haven't got anything else to test it to. But let me just show you to begin with. So basically, let me zoom right in. I've just got it on continuity, but I will put it on uh, diode test in a minute. But if you have a look at these two here, you see these are labelled up as ZD31 and ZD32, so I presume that corresponds to these two here. Now, just on continuity, if I go on this one here, you can see it doesn't matter which way I go round, it's not shorting, but the one next to it is. Yeah, I'll show you the reading in a minute on the uh, uh, diode test. And, for example, all the other diodes are all testing OK. And if you have a look here, there's a different type of diode. Now, I've definitely recognised these ones from, I think, my... What was it? The washing, uh, the dishwasher? I think it was. I think it was a dishwasher. And again, it says ZD, so Xena diode. And if you have a listen, you can see that they're not shorting. Sorry. That was just my leads. There we go. That's fine. Again, that was my leads. Uh, if you have a look up here, we've got another one here. And this is OK. Yeah. But now look at this one here. This one is also shorting yeah right now i'm going to put it just to zoom out a little bit just to show you the readings on here because it will probably make more sense to other other people that are far more knowledgeable than myself so if you have a look here now you can see the reading there so if i go across the one on the right hand side it well so let me go on a, a good diode so if i go on this one here you can see one way it's reading 0.54 and the other side it's open loop yeah. And again, if I went on this side here, this one, 0.55, and this side, open loop. If I go onto the Xena diode here, one side open loop, and the other side, 0.6. Okay, you get the idea. But now look at this one here on the right-hand side. Now, I believe it's because it's connected through here that it must be shortened through the other one, but it's reading the same both ways. So 0 0.64 and... Point, uh, six four again, point six five. Now on this one here, the one that is actually shorting, it's reading point zero zero four, and the other way, point zero zero four. And if I go onto this Xena diode here, which is also shorting, again it's uh, point zero zero four. I wonder whether them two are a bit iffy or not. If I go onto this one here, you can see open loop. Can you see they're just testing different? That one there and that one there are testing different. Now, there might be multiple things on this board that are different, but those two things don't quite look right. I'm thinking if I take that diode off, I wonder whether this one now would test OK on the right-hand side. I bet it would. I think it's going through, because if we have a look at the way the circuit board is, can you see it's kind of jumper together there? So if it's short in here, let me have a think. Would that also cause the reading there to be incorrect? I don't know, you see. Maybe it does, or maybe they're both, maybe they're both faulty. Uh, how important are they? I don't know. I mean, they go to this chip here. I'm not sure, and it does seem to be on this side of the board. So basically, remember, I'm not getting a 5-volt output or a 12-volt output. Well, actually, sorry, I don't know about the 12-volt output because I need to short pins here. But I'm not getting a 5-volt output, am I? And I presume I'm not getting any 12-volt output because it's not turning on. I would at least get a beep or something if the 12 volt was working. So it says to me that it's not getting as far. It's just stopping at the 240 volts. It's not going down to uh, 12 volts and 5 volts. Unless, of course, you know, these massive transformers are... Because uh... these must be the thing that are winding it down from 240 volts to 12 volts and 240 volts to 5 volts. I'm not sure. Would it be this one here as well? Then again, I've got one here. So I don't really know. I don't really know, and this is where I lack a huge amount of understanding. Anyway, I'm going to keep looking at it for a while, see if I can find anything else. Well, I can't find anything else. So, for example, if I go across all these things here, you can see that they short to the middle pin, but that doesn't do anything. That's not connected anywhere. But all the others, they're not shorting. And I've gone across all of them. I think I am going to take apart my PS4 Slim because the power supply might be very similar, even if it's just got a different, even if it's got a different outlet here. 
it might still be very similar so I think that's what I'm gonna do okay so this is my one hope I don't break this because I do enjoy my uh, my gaming nights with my best friend we play Rocket League and FIFA and stuff together so I really don't want to break this as you can see it's still intact here so this one here is a CUH 2016A and this one so that's a 2016A and I think this is a 21 this one here is a CUH 2116A so it's 20 and 21 and I believe looking on Google it's kind of confusing but I believe there's a different power supply but look we're not going to know until we take it apart so let's do that Yeah, power supply is different. I can tell there's different screws on it. Annoyingly, the connectors are reversed on this one here, so it's definitely, definitely different. Definitely different, quite a bit different actually. It's got three capacitors in it. Right, let's see if these ones are measuring any voltage before I go any further. So I'm on DC. No, these are fine. Yeah, this wouldn't have been on now since. Uh, about four or five, no, four days. Okay, so obviously after four days, they discharge themselves. Right, so I feel safe to go across here. Yeah, so this power supply now is completely different. I have a fuse here. I've got, is that the same one or a different one? Looks like it's slightly different. I've got two of them up here. So this is, this is a lot different than my one. I've got another little fuse here as well. Right, it's interesting to see but I don't know, this isn't really going to be of much use to me, is it? Amazing, it's so different. I wonder, was there a problem with this one? What I had to go over to the new one? This is clearly marked as well, primary and secondary. You can see the line it goes up here. Well, I was just going to see if there's any diodes on here that has the same reading that I might be able to kind of borrow. But then I'm taking a risk, aren't I? I could end up breaking this. Okay, I can see a couple of Xena diodes up here. I'm just going to do a little bit of testing on this one, see how this one's testing. Okay, I think I've made up my mind what I'm going to do, because this board is so different, I really can't find out really much from it. I'm pretty sure these diodes and that Xena diode shouldn't be testing as they are, but I haven't got anything to replace them with. Yes, these ones here have markings on, so I'd be able to work them out, but... I'm going to find it very hard to work out that one because I remember looking at these when I was doing my dishwasher and it's a complete nightmare trying to work out them ones there because the uh, the banding on them is so small and hard to see it's, uh, it's going to be very hard so what I'm going to do is I am going to swap these connections over because if you have a look the way they've labelled them up you can see there they actually tell you which pin is what yeah can you have a look there can you see the service this one up here is the plus 5 volts and if you have a look here it's the same on here. Can you see five volts in ground? This one is the return, and you can see there's the standby there, and this one here says standby here. So all I have to do is unsolder the bottom of them, and then basically put this one here on, no, sorry, put this one onto this board here, because this is the working board. I think I'm gonna try that. I don't think I will cause too much damage. And then 100% we're gonna know whether or not it's the power supply. If it's the power supply, I'm going to pay the £35. It's a shame because I've got the whole PlayStation 4 for £45. But still, it's not a well, it's not a great price, is it? Probably not going to make any money on it. But still, at least, least it will be working. And right now it's not working. So if I had spare boards, I would happily swap bits over. And I'm pretty sure I'm probably quite close to getting this working because this was definitely the fault. But when this blew, it's obviously blown a couple of other components as well. And it would be quite believable that some of the smaller components have gone. So it could just be a, a case of spending like one pound on a couple of diodes and a Xena diode and it might start working. But I really don't know, do I?
came off lovely and easy with no damage. So now I can put this one onto here. Hopefully this one will come off just as easy. So that came off nice and easy as well. So now I just have to solder that onto here. Alright, there we go. So there's a little tab underneath it to locate it, which is not on this board. But that's fine, because I just want to test it anyway, just purely to see if it's going to work or not. So now you can see that this one here will fit into this board. And if you have a look, the input and the output's the same. So this is my one here, and my one is a model number N15, 160 PIA. And if you have a look, uh, input AC 100 to 240 volts, which is the same as this, input 100 to 240 volts AC. This one is output in DC 4.8 volts at 1.5 amps. This is 4.8 volts at 1.5 amps and 12 volts at 13 amps, 12 volts at 13 amps. So they're actually outputting the same, so that's fine. Right, let's pop this back together. Right, okay, this is nowhere near back together I've just done the bare minimum so I've just basically put one screw in just to try and hold it together okay I'm slightly nervous because I've got the good power supply here and I hope there's nothing on the board here so I've got my good power supply in the faulty PlayStation 4 and I hope there's nothing on the board that's going to blow my power supply because I would be gutted right let's uh, plug it in and see what happens here we go right so I've plugged it in uh, no, still nothing. Oh, what? What is going on? Why is that not working? I'm really, really, really confused now. Really confused. Uh, so what, have I got a faulty power supply and motherboard? How unlucky would that be? I'm just going to unplug it, make sure I've definitely got that lead in nice and securely. So that's unplugged now. Yeah, that's definitely in. Well, I didn't dream that would happen. So either I've done something wrong with that connector, or more than likely it's a fault on the motherboard as well. How unlucky is that to actually have a failed power supply? Because remember, there was no 5 volts coming out of that. And uh, also a problem with the motherboard. Right, okay. Well, sure, I'm really getting nowhere now. I think this is going to end up being a complete failure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the power supply out and I'm going to see if we've got 5 volts coming out of it. Right, this is a real strange one. Watch this now. I've got the power supply here, which we know is good. I've got this lead here, which there's good continuity between here and here. I've got the power cable from the faulty PlayStation 4. And watch, when I go across these two here, I should have 5 volts. And you can see I haven't. I've got 0 0.06 volts. Now, bearing in mind that we've checked the fuse here, 
and it's all testing okay. And if I go to continuity here, do you remember we did this earlier? So I've got that in here now. Watch this. Uh, we haven't got continuity here now. So the whole time I think I've been fault finding with a dodgy lead. Let's check this fuse. Or maybe the power supply here has blown the fuse. Yeah, this fuse is this fuse is now blown. So the fault finding I've been doing for the last hour has been on a faulty lead. Now, that fuse wasn't blown earlier, so that says to me I've still got issues with that power supply there. But watch this now, on my good power supply, when I use my good lead, I now have five volts. So look, oops, there we go, DC volts. There you go, 4.8 volts. So now I need to put it back together using the good lead. And hopefully, when I use the good lead, we might now, hopefully we might have something. Right, so we're ready to go again. I've got my monitor here, and this time I'm using the good power supply on the 40 PS4, but with my good lead. Let's see what happens now. Right, here we go. Still nothing. Yes, yes, we've got something. Yes, brilliant, right, okay. Please display on the TV. Oh, wow, I was getting really confused about what was happening. Oh, yes, look at that. Fantastic. I was thinking it was the power supply, but I was just running around in circles because of the fuse gone in the lead. Oh, man, I'm so happy with that. Oh, fantastic. Right, so at least now, if I get a power supply, it should be working. Let's plug in. Got sound as well. There we go. Let's see if it's going to work. Yes, it is. Okay. Brilliant, fantastic. What a result. I'm so happy with that. Right, okay, I'm just going to get a disc, see if the disc's working, and uh, at least I know now 100% it is a power supply fault. I'm wondering now about the old power, no, the old power supply wasn't working, was it? Do you know what? I am going to put the old power supply back together just in case it is something to do with, for example, the fuse. But no, I'm pretty sure, I need to watch back the video, I'm pretty sure I tried the new cable when I changed over the power supply. I think that was the, the thing I did straight away. Yeah, sorry, there's no point in messing around with that. I need a new power supply because definitely I changed the cable over after I did the MOSFET and stuff. Well, brilliant. At least I know now it's just a case of a new power supply. So, yeah, £30 and it will be fixed. I'm partially tempted to get a 20 pound one and just swap the connection over. It's just that the uh, screw holes and stuff, I don't think all the screws line up like they should do, but maybe I can look into it a little bit more. Right, okay, let's pop this disc in and see if it's gonna take it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can see it's reading up there. Fantastic, there you go. So, yeah, just uh, new power supply is needed. I'm going to order one up. It, uh, it is a shame that I can't get this one fixed because I know it's only going to be something minor now. It's just that I'm not going to know about the uh, diodes and stuff. What I might do is, I think I am just out of curiosity, I'm going to punch in the, uh, the reading on the top of here, the writing on the top, just to see if there's a, there might be a picture which is identical. And uh, you never know, I might be able to sort something out. It's just that this Xena one here is the one that's going to be confusing me because, I mean, I'm not saying it is faulty, but you see there, that is ZD39. I mean, the markings there look the same as the uh, other ones, and I can't really... I remember when I looked into Xena dyers before, they're very confusing when you don't really know what you're on about. 
But anyway, it looks like we will have a working PlayStation, just have to spend a bit more money on it. Okay, so I'm gonna order one of these up and then, uh, yeah, see, uh, put it all back together, clean it up, hopefully it will all be good. So I'll see you, hopefully, in a little bit when I have a new power supply. Okay, so a couple of weeks have passed since that last part of the video, and luckily, when I was on holiday, I was looking on eBay on my phone, and I seen a seller selling the ones that I want for 19.99, so 20 UK pounds. So that was 15 pound cheaper than the other ones that I seen a week or so earlier. So what I did is I waited a few days until I knew I was going to be back, ordered one up, and then when I come home, I had a missed delivery card, and then they tried to deliver again a couple of days later, which is today, and I've opened this up now. And this seller I have bought from before and basically I was conned by this seller. I won't say what video it was or, or who the seller is, but basically, yeah, it was a, an obvious con. I didn't want to give them my money, but for the sake of the, content, the competition, £20 as opposed to £35 is a big difference. But when it arrived, yet again, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna need work doing to it. So basically, it came with a little warranty sticker on it. I'm not gonna show you the sticker because then you will know who I got it from. But basically, check it out. Look at the horrible tar stains on this. So if you compare it to this one here, let me put these two next to each other. Can you see this one here is the non-smoking one and the top one here is the smoking one. So if ever anybody needs a reason not to smoke, well, that's it there. Look at it, look at the difference between that and this, that is amazing. And it looks even worse on this side. Check out the horrible, look at the uh, components up here. Can you see, for example, where are we now? This one here. Basically, I've checked it to make sure there's no uh, voltage left in the capacitors. Look at the difference between those resistors. So if it's doing that to a board, you know what it's gonna do to your lungs. And not just your lungs, your hair, your clothes, everything. The person that had this must have been a pretty heavy smoker. So if there's any younger kids watching this, I think that's a pretty good reason not to smoke. I mean, look at the board there, around there. So basically, I presume this is gonna work, otherwise they wouldn't have sold it, look at the difference. But it's still gonna need work doing to it because I'm not happy to sell something with this inside because as soon as this starts to heat up, I'm pretty sure this is gonna absolutely stink and nobody's gonna want something that smells off second-hand smoke or tar in their house. So I'm gonna to have to give it an all a big clean with uh, IPA alcohol just to try to get rid of some of it. It's that bad, it's actually hard to get a reading from this resistor up here. So if you have a look on the, the faulty board, if you listen, you can see, just tap it and it works. Now watch this, just tap it and there's nothing happening because it is so dirty. I have to scrape away before I get to it. <laughs> yeah, look, oh, that's disgusting, but anyway, Looking at it, do you remember I showed you that diode before that I was unhappy with, let me zoom in. I think that is the reason why this board is not working. So if you have a look here, do you remember this diode here? If you have a listen, just on simple continuity, I've got a short this side, yeah? When I put the meter both ways. Now let's move on to the same component here. And there is no short. That is me like putting a lot of pressure on it, so I'm getting through all the staining. So it could be as simple as just changing out this diode here, and then it will start working. The only thing is, let's say if I do change out that diode and it turns out it's the chip, then it's gonna blow this diode again, and then I'm gonna be left with a board that's not working. So because I've already spent the money, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this one up, and I'm gonna pop it in, I'm gonna work with this one here. But it's interesting to know that it could possibly be that diode and if I had another one that I could work on then I definitely would take the diode off this one and put it on here just to see if this works because I know I'm going to end up fixing the PlayStation 4 but to me it's not a proper fix so yes it was broken to begin with and then it's going to work but I would rather actually find out the faulty component or components and fix them and that to me is like a, a true fix rather than just swapping out the whole thing but in this instance, I'm kind of, my hands are tied. There's not much I can do on this. So let's give this a good clean up and then pop it in the board and hopefully that will be it. One working PlayStation 4 Slim. Okay, so I'm gonna start cleaning now and this is what I'm gonna be using and I'm just gonna rub it all over and just keep mopping up the old tar with some kitchen roll.
There you go, look at that. You can see all the brown coming through there. Lovely. Okay, that's that side looking really nice now. Which can't be said for that kitchen roll. Look at that. Oh god, that is disgusting. Right, let's do this side now, which is equally as bad. Okay, that's not fully dry yet, but it is so much cleaner than before. So. This is what I got off the top side of it with all the components. And this is what I got off the bottom side where it was all soldered on. So there you go, that shows you now <laughs> what, uh, what happens to the inside of you when you smoke. It's a shame you can't clean your lungs out of IPA. Don't do that, just in case anybody thinks you can. <laughs> right, so uh, there we go, that's the difference. Now if you look between them now, you can see that the IPA's done a really good job between them. A really, really good job. In fact, I'd be hard pushed to tell which one was the one with the tar on. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this good board now, the working board, back in the faulty container because I don't wanna go through the process of having to clean up the container and everything like that. I've got a spare plastic one, I might as well put it in the good one, and then I know now that this will all be nice and clean. There we go, now when you look in there, it looks like a normal power supply. So I'm really happy with how that's cleaned up. Right, let's pop this back in the PlayStation 4 Slim. And before I forget, I need to change the fuse in this plug. So this was the old one and it's a 5 amp and I've double checked with my PlayStation 4 and it's also a 5 amp. Now I thought it'd be a 3 amp but I think I had the same issue with uh, Xbox ages ago and I think it must be maybe when it's doing some initial startup it might need a bit more oomph. I don't know but you would think that 3 amps would be more than enough. Anyway let's pop that one in and throw that old one away. Right let's get this back inside the PlayStation 4 slim now. all back together just need to put the lid on it now and you can see how clean it all is so it really looks like it's had very little use we give the cover a final clean and also the plug as well I'm well happy with that now it's come up looking really clean so uh, let's plug it in and see if this new power supply is working fine right okay I'm ready to plug it in I've got it set up, but uh, I haven't turned it on yet, so I'm quite apprehensive. Now, if this was real life, then of course I would have tested that power supply before cleaning it, but I wanted to show you the dirt on the video, so uh, I actually don't know if this replacement power supply works. Here we go, I'm plugging it in now. Fingers crossed. Oh, you're joking me. Oh, come on. Unbelievable, it's dead. Oh, I don't need this. Uh, let me try a different... Nope, it's not working. Unbelievable. And now, as well as that, I've taken off the void sticker on the power supply. Right, okay, let me double check the lead just in case somehow it's a fault with the lead. Oh, gutted. Right, I've swapped the lead with my one. Yeah, it's still not working. Let's get a disc. Now 
No, completely dead. Oh, I don't know what to do now. What is going through my mind is somehow in cleaning it, have I broken it? I should have tested it before, but at the same time, this seller has conned me before. So, uh, was it ever working when it was sent out? Because what they do is they get in a load of broken stuff and basically they just sell off the stuff that's working and then the stuff that's not working they put into job lots to say, uh, you know, like, oh, untested, but it is all tested. I, I'm, I'm not going to go any further than that. Uh, right, okay, I've got to take this apart again and see what's happening. And also I've got to be careful of these capacitors now because they're probably going to have 300 odd volts in them. Right, unbelievable. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Now I should be editing this out because it's going to make me look like a fool. But the thing is, you know, these things do happen. And uh, I want to leave it in there to show that, you know, we're not perfect. And when you make mistakes like this, then don't feel bad because there's more people than yourself that make them. Because often when you watch stuff on YouTube, it's all been edited to make it look perfect. Yes, I'm a complete and utter idiot. And how is it going to work if I didn't connect up this connector here? So obviously the power supply has got the voltage going into it, but it's not coming out here to turn it on because this is the thing that turns it on which allows the 12 volts to come through here. And I completely forgot to connect it. So I'm hoping now when I connect it that it will all work. And if I do, then uh, if it does work, which I'm sure it will, then uh, well, I'm going to apologise already to the seller, not that I've given his name anyway, but I was uh, sort of hinting at that that sold me a dud again, like previously, but uh, no, it was just my stupidity. These pins are a little bit bent, I'm finding it hard to get this uh, connector in. Make sure I'm pushing it in the right way, right, so it's that way around. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I hope this works now. This has been a real roller coaster for me. Make sure the ribbon cables are definitely in. Now, this time, let's see if it's going to work. Okay, back again. Let's plug it in. Hopefully, this time we'll have something. Yes! Oh god, I didn't do anything for a couple of seconds there and I was worried. Brilliant, I've got the blue light. Right, come up on screen and then I'll show you it when I'm off the, uh, you know, the gamer tags off the previous owner because I'm yet to reset this all. In fact, I can quickly show you that there now. There you have it. Fantastic working. So what I have to do now is I have to check every single part of it. Okay, I've been trying everything and it's all working fine. You can see one controller is working, two controllers are working both wirelessly and they're charging up via a wired connection. I've also connected up to the internet so online's working so there's going to be no problem with it being banned. I've tried the PlayStation camera, you can see it's connected there and also the voice microphone works so PlayStation! You can see it comes up across there. Try the disc tried ethernet cable everything is working absolutely fine i've downloaded fortnite on it discs are working so as far as i can see everything on this playstation is working so i actually think it was a good buy so i'm going to sell this now and i'm going to let you know what i sold it for at the end of the video see you then my mate Vince is back in the competition, £122, so I was really pleased with that. A lot of people bidding on it, so obviously it shows it's a popular item. But you know what, it was in very, very, very good condition. Hopefully the pictures and stuff justified how good the condition is. As well as that, remember it's just over one year old, so it looks like they do go for a fair bit of money. As well as that, the seller who sold me the power supply, I mentioned that it had a lot of smoke on it, and they happily gave me five pound back, so I said that I'm gonna to have to spend half an hour cleaning the thing. No arguments whatsoever. So I haven't worked out the profit yet, but 100% there's definitely profit on this one, and quite a big profit as well. So hopefully now, it means I'm gonna be back in this competition. So let's roll on week four and week five, and let's see what happens. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for the rest of this eBay repair challenge. Take care, bye now.